Hi, everybody. Welcome to the show. My guest this week is uh, someone who has a really great perspective on national security issues, uh, especially given what's been going on in our country. She is a former uh, Deputy Homeland Security uh, uh, Advisor under uh, President Obama, is a faculty chair, not just the faculty people, the faculty <laughs> chair, chair. the Homeland Security <laughs> Program at Harvard's Kennedy School of Government. And that's not an online school. That's a, like a real That's school, a real okay? one. And, it's uh, online now, though. Online and now. Uh, Julia Kaim, great to have you on the show. Thank, thank you so you. much for having yeah. me. I'm thrilled. Yeah, and I love your set. It's beautiful. Thank it's you. Than, this is just something we got in Italy on our honeymoon. All right, anyway, um, I want to jump in. You, you wrote a piece recently for The Atlantic. Uh, Biden is now officially our president. Uh, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> uh, and um Trump is gone, obviously, at, at least from the White House. And, and you you talked about coalitions not thriving without their, yeah. their leader, right? And and you said the way to unite this country is to isolate acts of violence and the leader who incites it from legitimate expression. Uh, Trump was uh, a north star for a certain kind of radical. Americans will be safer uh, the more that star loses its shine. I don't usually like to start uh, an interview yeah. with a guest is disagreeing, but. I think he goes away, but doesn't go away. That that coalition's still out there. And maybe yeah. some are upset with him because he didn't march down to the Capitol with him and blah, blah, blah. But he can do a lot, a lot of damage he, outside. And yeah, so, okay, that? so I mean, the way to think about it is, so the, the way to think about what has happened is not Trump incites violence. It's much more specific in that. He operationalizes terrorism. So we have to think about him as, and I'm careful about my language. I don't call him a terrorist, like, because then I get into a big fight. That he is the leader, he is the operational and motivational leader of a, of a, of a violent domestic terrorism group. Uh, that's not all of his supporters. It's not even all of MAGA. In fact, one of the untold stories of January 6th was how small the rally was before it, uh, some elements of it went up the hill to the Capitol. I mean, this was supposed to be his last dance rally and he can only get a couple thousand people there, but that element will still exist. And so then you have to ask yourself, well, as the terrorist organization, uh, us, we're in a major counterterrorism effort right now. It was very intense leading up to the inauguration with 25,000 National Guard and all sorts of things. But it's not, but it will continue. You're right. And it will continue in various forms, lone wolf, organized, sense of, you know, disempowerment. But what's the one precondition? that's necessary for any, this is out of counterterrorism states, for any terrorist organization to begin to become less relevant and therefore less violent. And that is that its leader no longer is a winner. I mean, in other words, that, 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 that he has no ability to recruit because terrorist organizations like to be on the winning side. He has no ability to organize. He has no ability to communicate that he begins to uh, 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 um, uh, to be isolated or that he's, con I'm sorry, he continues to be isolated. Uh, and so, for example, I view the impeachment vote not through the lens of politics or unity or some technical legal thing about whether a president, you know, can be impeached after he's no longer president. I don't care, right. any of those. I right. view it through the lens of counterterrorism. It is a number, another form of isolation. It's not going to solve everything, but it's a precondition. Well, and, and you actually say the history of counterterrorism suggests that letting Trump off easily is exactly the wrong strategy. Yeah. You need to make it, you say, uh, quote, make it impossible for the group to get oxygen again. But but my my concern is um, it, you look, there is a view that Charlottesville sort of brought a lot of these groups together and essentially yeah. created a network. Right. Because they were realizing we were operating independently as these disparate groups and they became stronger as a result. And I don't see how that goes away. Oh, and so and and so the problem is from within, it's the exact opposite of what you want in the Republican Party. Like there's no other than Trump, there's no one in the Republican Party that can say to these people, stop, we're, we're done, go take a time right. out. This isn't what this is. It's the opposite. There are insurgent leaders, in my opinion, in the government right now, in Congress, that are going to do the bidding of these groups. And so how do you as a counterterrorist expert counter the fact that the insurgents are already in the government yeah. and part of the government that they're trying to overthrow? 
So I'm less pessimistic than you because I mean, in other words, because otherwise one is what's your other alternative, right? And the second yeah. is, I think, uh, is, is, uh, is when you, is because you're starting to already see in the polling, the disconnect between uh, Trump supporters and this violent domestic group. Look, I'm not, I'm not here to, to heal the divides of, uh, you know, that divide us right. as a nation, right? I'm here. So I'm, I'm thinking of, of a tactical organization. And I think so, so, so what, so in counterterrorism, and I have to be careful, we, we call it uh, uh, leadership decapitation, which is the, which is if you, that, that, that people like T Ted Cruz will view it as less beneficial to be team Trump and insurrectionist if there's all these consequences for having done that. So you're starting to see some of them, right? Some of them is of course the criminal uh, prosecutions against those who raided. I think this New Yorker video that shows yeah. the criminals looking through the terrorists, yeah. looking through scenes it's like, oh, Ted would want us to do that. Like literally. And is, supports is, the theory it, that this is a very planned conspiracy because they're oh, talking yeah, absolutely. about, well, we need this and we don't need that. Yeah. And it's not yeah. just some kids kind of going, hey, let's right. have some but fun with I, paper. Yeah. And I, I mean, for your viewers and stuff, like, I think I think it's an odd take. And I'm just saying this because I think we, I don't because I'm like a half glass full hope person, given the field mm -hmm. I'm in. But I think it's a weird view to, to think that Trump you know, is this horrible figure and he, you know, has incited all this stuff and he's, most importantly, he's nurtured it. And then that his departure doesn't have some influence. I mean, they are related. In other words, his isol because he has such influence, he's just a unique and horrible American character. His, mm -hmm. his departure and isolation, if we can keep doing it. Now, one of the interesting things about this counterterrorism effort is just, it's not, like normal ones, it's got different pieces. You've got the criminal prosecutions of his supporters, which serves also as a deterrent. It's not just about mm. what they did. You've got the deplatforming. You've got the banks running away from the family. You've got the cabinet members not showing up to the farewell. You've got an app. I mean, whatever. Look, so this is what this is what you mean when you say it keeps going and it doesn't keep stop going, and, yeah, keep yeah, going because he yeah. cannot have a second act. And sure I think that's really good. And I do think, you know, sometimes in my moments of deep darkness. Yeah, I remember like Obama was president just four years ago. I mean, America, like in other yeah. words, the, the, your, your ability, the country's ability to mirror leadership uh, will now follow the new president. And one of the things that Trump did is he nurtured this in a way. And people always say, oh, he was both sides or ism. He wasn't both sides. He was one side. Like right. both sides or ism lets him, lets him get away with it. He, right. was, he was one side. Right. And I think having a president who's on the other side will, will shame in all the ways that we should, right? I think I, I have no problem with shaming people um, just so that they're not violent. I'm not going to change their hearts, but a long way yeah. of saying- you know, the more Senator Graham talks of unity, the more I talk about isolation. Right. They're like, right. dream on, dream <laughs> right, on, exactly. buddy. Yeah. I mean, well, you know, listen, I think Biden came. At, it, my wife is a big believer, maybe more so that, that things happen for a reason. But yeah. to, for him to come to this place of power in his 70s, I think is a good thing. If he were a young, um, ambitious, 50 something year old guy, he may not be so open to bipartisanship. I think he really is looking at this as his last act of getting this yeah. country to really, heal. I really believe he's going to do that. And, and it's funny because you talk about this thing called uh, stochastic terrorism. Uh, and yeah, explain, explain what that is uh, to the viewers, because I thought it was a really interesting take on the analysis of how Trump and people like Trump who lead have had operated in. And yeah. It was, yeah. And I think, I mean, I've been sort of, the first time I used the word publicly was 2018. Stochastic just is a fancy, you know, Kennedy school name for random. And it's just a way of describing what Trump was doing, that it wasn't, you know, people knew that he was inciting violence, but it was really different. What he was doing was he was using language to, uh, uh, to promote, incite terrorism which is a particular kind of violence. It's a violence for political gain, to support a political ideology, in this case, to keep him in power or to silence his quote unquote enemies like the media, 
the Michigan governor, uh, you know, whoever, whoever he went out after day after day. Uh, and stochastic was just his way of utilizing language, like say, take something like liberate Michigan in which it's not direct, it doesn't say go kidnap the governor, right? It's, but it's more likely to inspire terror, right? And the people who planned the kidnapping and murder of the governor of Michigan were well, heard what Trump was telling them. They knew exactly what liberate Michigan meant. So it's, yeah. it's a way of thinking about what he was doing. Now, I'll be honest with you, after the election, he changed from stochastic to direct. I was very clear about that. He was saying January 6th, he was telling them why they were uh, angry. He was saying, come congregate. He was saying words like fight or right. will be wild. Right. He used in right. a tweet, will be wild. Right. Right. The morning of, he tells them to go stop the steal, stop exactly by going up to the Capitol. You all can't, of those you gotta to fight, me, you gotta fight to keep your country. Fight those right, words, fight, exactly. Fight, so yeah, all of yeah. all of that to me was direct. It right. was direct. Right, and and in a way, for a while, he was operating operating like a mob boss who orders yeah. hits, but never is always never smart says enough. Then to he say, right. Then he got into the removed. hits. Right. right, and then he sort of got into his hits, and and so when you have a, a person, yeah, T Timothy Snyder of Yale just wrote this piece, American Abyss, uh, for the yeah. New York Times, and he talks about uh, uh, um, that there is a, a period of time, and we hit it at twenty twenty, where somebody like Trump sort of question calls into question, as a lot of dictators do in the Weimar Republic, this happened. You know, he starts yeah. to call into question institutions, the media the courts, everything. Right. And then you and, and he called it gaming the system and the Republicans gaming the system. And by the way, I'm not lumping all, every, every Republican into that riot either. OK, I know that was a small group, but it's a very vociferous and powerful group. And that's why maybe I'm less optimistic than you are on some level. But right. so so uh, Professor Snyder says, you know, that, that these Republicans game the system long enough that they start to that the people in that party start to really believe that there are no rules. And then a guy. Yeah. Like Trump comes in and blows it up and says, let's break it. Now, he said it didn't work in 2020. It came close, but it could work in 2024. And he calls this new group, Josh Hawley, for example. Yeah. People who, who were raised in that era of no rules, game the system, break the system. And that's all they know. And they're going to just continue this. And so my concern is, what do we do for the next four years? Because albeit, okay, you de you decapitate the head of this thing, okay, in theory, but he's still out there. They're mm -hmm. they're very angry. You're mm -hmm. not going to turn this off with a light switch. So, no, I'm, I'm not sure saying that. How I'm do not you not saying how, how do you how do you? It's the dimmer. I mean, it's it's a dimmer. We used to have a major white supremacy problem in this country, right? right. Lynchings, tens of thousands of lynchings. Right. We didn't end racism right? Yeah. Overnight. We didn't end yeah. it totally. We're talking about risk reduction. Now. I mean, that, and I think that's the dark place people get is that they imagine that things were perfect before. And, and I think that they're right. not. I mean, I think, I think we have to think of it as a dimmer. We have, it's hot now and we have mm. to lower it, which is basically no mercy for anyone involved with the capital, right? I mean, yeah. in other words, the total isolation, whatever. Does it go away? No, but it, over time it becomes less toxic, fewer people are appealed to it. You, the people get smarter. We, people, people are provided, honestly, people are provided off ramps. This is one of the challenges that I think non-Trump people are going to have is how, how, how do you, you know, what, what happened, how, how can people come back into the fold in some way without punishing them? Societies have dealt, you know, what does reconciliation look like? I, I separate the violent people from the, from others. So I right. think, I think, I think we can go to a dark place if we, if one, if we delude ourselves to how it was before, but two, if we think the goal is elimination, now the goal is just continuing to reduce over 10, 20, 30 years. Um, because this, this wasn't, this was, um, mastered by Trump, but it wasn't created by him. I mean, these right. elements, they, they, they just, they just, yeah. And I think that if you can, if you can view it as a, as a, as a threat that is manageable, once again, mm. this, this piece, um, and I'll tell you on the bright side is look at some of this polling now already as, as Trump exits left, right. Is uh, Biden is one of the most popular incoming presidents ever uh, 65 to 70 percent 
Trump's approval, uh, disapproval rating approval, was down to 34%. Disapproval, exactly. All of that stuff. The number of people now who believe that the election was fair is rising. It's over 65% now. So, so things do, you know, things do change when the, you know, when the hotness is over. And that's what I think people, that's what I think Trump is not going to realize is how irrelevant he is without uh, chaos. Um, because, and that's what, that's why we have to continue to isolate him because his, the only thing that will make him relevant in the future is if he be, continues to, to promote, uh, violence. Were, this were the you only thing. Were, were you like, like, no one's going to turn to Trump about, you know, Iranian policy. I mean, he's not right. relevant in the, right. like, in terms of like, it's not like you're going to learn something like you might from whether you agreed or disagreed with him from Bush or, or, uh, or, uh, or even Carter, right? Like all of them, they're relevant because they provide value. There's no right. value to Trump. But, but he did a classic dictator move, right? Yeah. You find an aggrieved people marginalized. You tell them, you, you, you make it about race, which was happening in Weimar right. Republic and anti-Semitism. You sprinkle in a little, like, I can, I'm your savior. You start to get them to believe, as uh, Professor Snyder said, that the system is broken and you know, there are no rules. And voila, right? You have, I mean, yeah. we came close. I mean, we're close to like, and yeah. I, I get that th that is a, it is a dimmer and I get that, but sort of like, Here's what the, you you just made reference to to the New Yorker video that came out. You know the most alarming piece of video I've seen so far of everything. Not the guy sitting yeah. at the desk with Pelosi. They're praying. They have, they were praying. I know. And, and when I it know. becomes a, when it becomes religious zealots and not just a political belief or polit right, you're to me you're at a whole other level of anger, crazy, do anything. Um, does that concern you? How do you, I mean, this was almost felt like th th this was short of them. Someone saying we're doing this in the name of Christianity. That's what it felt. Yeah. Like. And when you yeah. get to that point, as you know, uh, with, with religious wars over the centuries, how do you disconnect that part? How do you do you arrest them? They look at them. They're folding like I losers. I want to pardon. So the I fact that the fact that uh, they invoke the Bible, do you really think any more than Trump, these, I mean, these guys. Um, no, I don't think. They, they, I don't think. I, I don't. I don't think it's. Oh, that isn't that nice. I think that they're willing to do anything. Look, I, I, we talked off yeah. camera. I got COVID. I got COVID in Florida yeah. because those clowns wouldn't wear masks, right? I know. And I and I and I'm very sensitive to this. So I would see people. I don't know. A reporter go up to somebody in line at the for bat, for voting, and you're not wearing a mask. You know, Republican, you're not wearing a mask. Well, yeah, you know, you could die. Well, you got to die sometime. I'm here for my guy. That sounded like an Al Qaeda terrorist. Like you, I'm going to die for my guy. Like, yeah. So to me, that religion part worries me a little bit, maybe more so than you. But like, how do you deal? I with think. That? Yeah. I mean, I think. Look, that's going to be an element. I. I mean, the longer term, and this is where you do get lessons. I mean, one of the most interesting and pathetic things about here. Let me finish my sentence. One of the most what pathetic things about. The, this unity drive by Republicans, um, you know, let's just move on, pretend like it didn't happen, is uh, which will ha which which will be their narrative as they realize yeah. uh, that's the future. Is uh, is their failure to focus on the violent elements within within their their uh, their world, right? I mean, in other, so like think about responsible Arab and Muslim leaders, Americans, which I am, after 9-11. Uh, after mm -hmm. We did everything we could to say they are not us. Right. Whatever they're saying, yeah. they are not us. Mm -hmm. And to, to say that is a cancer on, on a religion and on an ethnicity. And so that's, you know, one would hope and you're and you're starting to see elements of that. You're starting to see Republicans now saying that they're going to you know vote for impeachment. You're seeing the, the, the polling change. And I think the more we have a president who doesn't uh, who we can look away from. I know that sounds weird because you and I are clearly both political people, but like yeah. just like I think 
Biden's greatest gift is might be just like our ability to, to look away for a little. Like, yeah. like what will it be like to wake up on a Sunday where you're like, oh, I'm gonna do the, you know, we're still in COVID. <laughs> and not, like, and and not I rush think to that's, the TV. And turn yeah, the or to the to Twitter see. and stuff. You, yeah. you literally wake up going, I wonder what, what blew up. I said to my yeah. wife, I said, you know, I, I worked on The Daily Show as a writer and I worked on The Late yeah. Show with Stephen Colbert and now I'm doing other things. But you can't some of this is like it's it's like right out of a show or a movie like it's yeah. it's it's in, it's enthralling it's intoxicating it's scary it's and and so you're right i think it would be a relief to just get up and go let's go for a walk with the dog this morning and not think yeah. about all of it yeah yeah or just like look away like i mean even me who's like so political and i love you know all of that world and what's happening it's like you know policy is going to work in real time. There won't be surprises every day. Like there'll be like a, you know, interagency discussions. Like it will be like, like normal again, like normal right. in the sense, like, you know, the, the every day isn't some banner headline, you know, and it, and, and I think one of the things why I think Trump has to continue to be isolated in the future, like, like continue to be, you know, deplatformed everything in the future is, um, um, is because he knows the only way he remains relevant is through inciting violence. He knows yes. that because yes. no one's going to turn to him. Um, right. right. But so, the, so what do you do about the Josh Hawley, the Ted Cruz's of the world, the Mo Brooks, who are firmly entrenched in this? OK, and yeah. they do have a, they do have a voter base that will go to the ends of the earth for Trump. And if it's not Trump etch out his right. name, put somebody I else's we, name in. What, how, is it a combination of sort of don uh, donor money drying up? Yeah. I mean, I don't see his voters voting him out. I don't see them. No, but I think it's a, it's a combination of things. Look, it works. Josh, How Josh Howley is already yeah. doing Marginal the, ones. doing the Trump who I'm waiting five minutes for that one from Ted. Look, I don't, I'm not trying to fix them. I don't want to have a beer with them. I don't want to whatever. I just no, want I, no, them. I yeah, yeah. I just, and, and I think, so it is working. I mean, if you look at Josh, if you look at how he's comments lately, he's on defense. Yeah. He's got, he's got his major funders now, not, not willing to give to him. He right. chose unwisely. Now he may be a Senator, I don't think he's going to be the nominee. And the weirdest thing is like, I'm a big Democrat. I'm uninterested in fixing the Republican Party. It does not right. interest me. But right. that's why it's good to have Biden as president, because he yes. reached out to McConnell. They're going to church together tonight. That is like, that's what that's what's going to make him a yeah. better, per, you know, better person. So that's so, the way to think about it. So you're not going to solve everything. There's and there's all look. There is always going to be a Mo Brooks in Congress. Like there's always yeah. like every Congress has their five or six freaking crazies. Yeah, but and they just recycle. Yeah, I know, but I, I know. think they let you. I so we just met, but I think they let they let people take too much oxygen out of it. Okay. Like he's one freaking congressman in a <laughs> podunk Alabama district. Like honestly, right. like right. and and we've got. AOC and Pelosi and all these wonderful people who have much bigger platform. And we give Mo the, his Too platform. Too much. Well, I love yeah. your pessimism. I know we have of to jump. Of course. One, I, one, look, look, I, there's I mean, no your other path forward. I have, a, I have yeah. more pessimism. I'm sorry. No, I'm, no, no, no. Not allowed. Not today. Uh, real Get last, Biden in a few weeks. Last, last, last thing, because I know you have to jump. What do we learn from uh, uh, Al-Qaeda and how we've dealt yeah. with them and sort of not crush them, but sort of it certainly brought them down a peg to deal with domestic terrorism. Is there one or two things that- Well, we it was the isolation here? of the leader. That's what got me to this Same moment. Thing. Is it wasn't, it was, it was, it didn't solve it, but it was a precondition. Cause, okay. cause what's hard is recruitment. Recruitment. Got it. Got it. Well, oh, okay. One, I feel class better. School, you got to give Biden a couple months. I I, Come on. I wish I, I wish I could give you a hug or something. Oh, no, 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 no. We'll I, talk. I, I, we'll talk in three or four months. You're going to feel right. better.